Roni O'Brien comes from Princeton area of Massachusetts, and she is a poet and a community activist in the work that she does in connecting community with poetry and other art forms. Some of the work that she is involved with include something called the 4 by 4 group, which is four visual artists and four poets that respond and interface through poetry and art to each other's work. And, and then in follow-up, they provide different programs in community. She also works as the Summer Writing Series Coordinator for the Stanley Kunitz Boyhood Home in Worcester. Her own poetry is published in a number of journals, and it has also been translated in Mandarin and Braille. She has two chapbooks of her poetry, Farm Wife, which was a winner of the William and Kingman page book, and Earth, published by the Cat Rock Press. Her most recent book, Latest Legacy of the Last World, was published last year in 2016. Susan won the Worcester County Poetry Association Award with her poem, which placed first in the contest uh, and was selected by poet Mary Oliver. And she was also voted Poet of the Year by the New England Association of the Teachers of Psychology. And her work has been nominated by for four Pushcart Prizes. I am delighted that she can be with us this morning all the way from Princeton. Please welcome Susan Roney O'Brien. Good to be here. Thank you very much for coming and, and opening your hearts um, to hear what I have to say. Um, I don't talk a lot between poems, um, which is kind of a, 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 a greed to get as many in as I can. Um, my first one is about New Zealand, and the only word that you may not know is the word tui, which is a kind of parrot. Um, my husband left for New Zealand Tuesday for a photography trip for himself, his first time away. Um, I'm so glad he finally decided that he was a photographer, not just a businessman. Love it. Keepsake. Let the green hills ease the landscape of your mind. Turquoise water cleanse remorse, round back to streams that flow to the Tasman Sea, where you float on your back your hair spread like sunset. Let the song of the Tui sweeten your dreams, fill you with notes you can hear always, secure a place for you in the sounds of earth shifting in her orbit. Let the circle be of bone. Let the life, excuse me, be the life you will not regret, the curves and turnings, its rivers and back flashing streams. Carry with you mountains, green and slate, oceans of variegating blues, soft gray shades and shadows of clouds, air like breath of trees. Where else in earth do bees reach so deeply into gold? I have a chocolate lab. <laughs> That's all that needs to be said. Retriever training. A long shot from the ball launcher, and yes, he runs for the orange ball, past the boulder, past the apple tree, and into the field where he mulls it, sits. You squat, lift your voice an octave, feign excitement, clap palms against pant legs, holler, come here, come on, bring it here, and his ears flop as those brown legs gather speed and he runs back in his flapping dog body. Drop, drop, you shout, and he does. Repeat, replay, 23 times. <laughs> you call, bend to him, and when the ball drops at your feet, toss it out again. You finally got it. You're trained. <laughs> okay. um, poems here range from um, older ones to newer ones, and um, this is an older one. For Scythia, 
From the hall, I watched him shatter the orange dishes my mother thought unbreakable, slamming them against gray tile as she crouched denying milkman, mailman, all who came to the house while he was at work, who heard quick breaths between her words, appraised her body. Each night I set the table, and when it was time, we all sat for him to lead us in grace, careful to keep our elbows off the cloth, careful to eat everything so we wouldn't say how ungrateful we were for the food on our plates, and then, with his leather belt, teach us manners. But when he smashed those dishes, I ran. It was still light, so it must have been spring, yes, May, because I crawled through wands supple as whips but studded with blossoms to get inside the Forsythia cave. I looked as hard as I could. Each stem was a tight green throat, each mouth tongueless gold entered by bees whose furry bodies spun back out dusted with pollen. And watching them, I almost forgot the sounds inside the house until my mother slammed the windows down and my ears filled with buzzing. Huddled in the damp earth beneath Forsythia, straining for silence, I watch night billow up from the dirt, sapping the flowers. When the crashes stopped, she called for me. Come in, come in. Um, this poem is about childhood, but late adolescence and the first love. <laughs> it's called Miller's. Um, my father was from the Midwest, and Miller's were, it was, it was another name for, for moths. And I lived on Miller Street, <laughs> so there. <laughs> Miller's. There is no help for it now. That summer has passed. But some nights I dream the old porch, its door hooks shut, the bulb dark above. We lean into the screen, you outside, me within. Our palms mirrored, and in all innocence, we press our hands together before turning away. And in that dream, after you've gone, after tree frogs start again, I turn the porch light on so moths will come and flatten wide white wings against the screen, still warm from the heat of our palms. Um, I have a grandson named Ben, and this is the poem I wrote for him, Paper Boat. Your mother grew among vetch and hollyhocks in a far green field, and we found her brother under the front porch, living with trolls. You came to light easily, as though light were born from pores of your body, and air bent itself into your lungs. Your eyes took sky, and when you were old enough, you set out in the boat your father had made beneath green-leafed sail tied to a mast of splendid stems. We did not know where you would go out in the sea, but you knew, white boat tossing and we on shore, waiting, watching, until we could see you no more. Then stories came of how you were lost, how the boat took on water and sank in the night, how you slew the serpent that twined around the hull where so many tales of fishes couldn't break water's hold. Some said you reached an island just at the horizon, and that first night strode onto sand and through wide streets of gold. The streaks of light like so many fingers. We heard you found a strong and beautiful woman, grew rich, grew old. But then you came home in your old boy body, a child of seven or eight, and for a year did not speak of your journey until one winter afternoon, when your eyes clenched to hold tears back, you said you missed your lost boat and turned away. <coughs> this is called Dressing Down. My mother's round-toed, black suede, fat-heeled pumps, her double-breasted suit, shoulder pads, gridiron thick, jacket nipped at the waist, straight skirt, she was a flirt in the 40s. Worked retail, then took up nursing. All those boys come home from war. She stored old clothes in, a card in cardboard boxes in the big closet. Key squirreled behind her wedding photo on the mantel. And when the clothes fit, I wore them to school until I discovered Auschwitz, Treblinka, their raw bone survivors, 
saw films of gaunt bodies, bones, striped flags flapping. My mother, low voice, said she didn't know about the camps. Nobody would have believed it anyway, but I put back her clothing, read everything I could find, decided everyone must have known, the smoke rising, ghosts of six million dead on its breath. I wouldn't buy striped outfits, wore clothes that reminded me of nothing, clothes without a past. I wish I could say I rose up in anger. Instead, silent, I wrote nightmares into notebooks, rode my bike, no hands, read fantasies, fairy tales. And when America moved on to my war, I wore jeans and flannel, back, black work boots, but didn't understand why my brother was arguing with his friends about napalm, draft cards, Canada, until I saw a photograph of a girl younger than me, naked, running, her scream in my throat. Um, my husband is a very good cook, but peach pie um, got him. <laughs> this is called peach pie. Even after dunking the six gold peaches in boiling water, sinking them beneath the ro rolling, then plopping each one into the bowl of cold, ice still floating, what the recipe said would happen didn't, and he yelled for me to help peel the goddamn peaches. <laughs> Did you? I started, and the frustration rolled out of his mouth like the peeling should have rolled off the fruit. I grabbed a knife and took my place beside him at the corner, peaches bobbing in the cold water like boys. Nothing works the way it's supposed to anymore, he muttered. It's only the peaches, I said, and kept peeling, then cut the flesh into slices. We should invite the kids over, I said. Who will eat this? They wouldn't come, he said, and moved to the marble board where the crust waited to be rolled. Maybe they'd come, I tried again. They've got better things to do than come over here and be bored. Find me the nine-inch pie plate, will you? I bent to the cabinet and opened the door. Metal pie plates came rolling out, clattered to the floor. The glass one didn't fall. Good news, I said. The nine-incher didn't break. One thing all day, said he, I can be thankful for. <laughs> um, I've come to the age where a lot of the people I really love are, are, are dying, and um, um, this is called Lanterns, and it's for Bob Warren. I had forgotten you, you had been dying so long when I counted the nearly gone. But this morning when I saw the first blueberry blossoms, small lanterns at my feet, you came light stepping, your Welsh Springer beside, binoculars swinging. You were the only one I knew who could walk silent through last year's dropped leaves, the only one who could read flattened fern fronds, snap twigs, could name tree by bark, and after all this time, you still remembered who I was, asked how we both got to this place where spring comes up from the ground, and to see it, we have to bend so far down. Um, and this is for my neighbor, Joe, missing. And the she in this is his daughter. She carries his shoes into the emptied room, bed stripped to ticking. The brass elephant bell on the mantel has lost its tongue. Black and white photographs above the fire mirror him as a young man. And no matter how long she looks or where, she cannot conjure his last face, cannot remember the timber of his voice when he called her to walk in the woods. Um, the, the book, Legacy of the Last World, um, starts with a bunch of Adam and Eve poems, and this is one of those. <clears throat> Afterwards, in Eden, Bat sang to me. Their song, waves of the sea or the cadence of thermals, pulse beats of air, and oh, the deep hearing wove sound itself into tapestry. Bird calls, whale cries, and when moths emerged from their cocoons, I heard the shells crash onto the sounding board of soil. Such cacophony. I twined my hair into ropes over my ears. And then there were the visions, colors blistering as lightning splitting a tree. Festering in air, tiny creatures lived out their lives on Adam's eyebrows and tunneled through the down that forests his chest. At night, the luminescence seared my eyelids, and I lay dazzled by the intensity of sky, viscous with stars, a vast thick liquid in which Eden was suspended. 
The path of Adam's touch on the skin of a pear left a trail of scent so rich I could taste the salt on his hands when placing the fruit in my mouth. When I ate a raspberry, lobe by lobe, the earth grew damp, paths of worms twisted over my tongue, and the paws of small animals and beaks of birds all lived in the taste. So taste was never singular, but prismatic. All fruit was one in the history of fruit. My body was so open to the air that the whir of a hummingbird beside a nipple would cause it to harden. And at night, I had to sleep high in a woven nest, piled with flower petals and lost feathers, or wake bruised. Stepping between God's trees, I could know all the stories of all the creatures who had walked there before. And when Adam brushed by me or touched my shoulder, it was as though great flares of stars had entered my body while bees swirled around the place of touch. Sometimes the earth smell, brown and full of rotting leaves, roiled up from the soil, or the scent of lilacs overwhelmed me so that plunging my head beneath the surface of a pond was the only way to stop the pungency. Sometimes on warm nights, when the moon hung in the sky and I lay restless in my arbor bed, the animals would infuse the air with mating, the musk, tawny gold, cloying. There was no solitude, no quiet, little peace in the garden I remember, and everywhere the fruit had hung heavy overhead. When I started writing the Eve poems, I had, I had reread the Bible and realized that Eve's death was never mentioned. Um, Adam's was, but um, so I decided that she's still around. Um, so um, I had to give her a reason for leaving, um, leaving Eden. Um, and the book is based on, on her choices to leave Eden and the reasons why it was a good choice. Um, this one is called Coyote. <clears throat> I ease a log into the stove. It is zero outside, and the sun is not yet risen. Yesterday, or was it the day before, I watched two coyotes eat fallen apples. New moonlight grazes only one set of tracks that loops out of the forest. So many are lost among low branches in deep snow. Not long ago, I lost a family, one soul at a time. And the woods beyond stone walls, where in summer fox grapes climb tangles and burrs, is grown beyond my understanding. What lies ice sheathed, hidden when we turn from each other? If I met my sister in these woods, would I recognize her beneath the full snow moon? Um, this last poem is, a, is a, a two voices. And um, it will it will it will give my apology for everything I ever write. <laughs> it's called disclaimer. It began in a small town, neighbors whiter than churches. Were you poor? Of course. We used to wait at Salvation Army boxes. You mean you went through them, took stuff? Well, just what we needed. Nobody saw us. It must have been hard. Not really. We were a typical family. Father worked two jobs, drank a bit, mom at home. Both parents smoked. We went to church. What kind of kid were you? Quiet. I stuttered. Still learning not to bother talking. So learn not to bother talking. I wrote and passed poems off as someone else's. Really? It was safer not to admit. So you lied. I guess you could say that. What I came to you about, in fact, is poetry. The lies in it. You lie in your poems. Just about situations, experiences that speak to me, experiences I can get inside of and manipulate. You even change the stories you steal. I make them better. You could say I customize them to fit my needs. So what do you want from me? Wait a minute. Did you take something that happened to me and turn it into a poem? Yeah. I was wondering how to tell you. Your life is my life. In fact, everybody's life is my life. So you're a liar and a thief, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. If you move past this point, everything will change. Do you have anything to declare? Is there a line here? Is it not visible? Is there a line here to cross? What is expected? You would think the entrances 
and especially the exits, would be clearly marked. What is your name, please? Do you have anything to declare? The old part of the city was surrounded by a wall, but it does not say in the guide whether it was meant to be to keep people in or out. All of this, of course, is immaterial. Lines have been drawn, laws have been established. If you pass this point, everything will change. It's by Dan Lewis. I went to a funeral today. Dalen is dead. White tux all decked out. Black face stands out. Flowers pastel. I've never been to a funeral for a murder victim. But that's him, lying cold, 21 years old. City streets, potholes, Bullseye, bullet holes, torn down street signs, tired unemployment lines, poverty that binds young men to this place. Look at his face, just starting to find his way in this turnabout, dropout, tree ripped out neighborhood. Tried to do good, he knew he could make the world a better place, make himself a man of grace. Piedmont man, king of Queen Street, family man going out to eat, aunt's place, Chandler Street, little cousin five years sweet, watch Dalen's life come undone. Man with a gun, 24 years young, got to make things right after a good for nothing fight, got spat on, got disgraced, so he fired eight bullets to the face. Now another young man sleeps for keeps. Another woman weeps and the people cry because tomorrow another sorrow, another young man will die. We are rubbing our hands together like sticks. We are pacing the room. We are breathing in sputters in gusts, never sure if the words in our heart will form sparks when we speak or fall flat and mute to the floor. We are summoning the boldness to stand out loud, to leave our shelter. There's no risk of being extinguished if you've never burned a light. We are stumbling in the dark proclaiming with each small step, we are worth this time and the courage we clench in our fists. We are fighting what is, struggling toward what may be, knowing we hold the power to become a flame, our voices strong and soft enough to sing this glint into fire. Thank you. Uh, have you ever heard the expression, fake it till you make it? Yeah. Uh, this is my fake it to make it song. I've been singing it a lot recently. And I hope you can sing it with me. And chorus. It'll come up four times. I spread my wings when the sun comes up The whole world spins in my coffee cup I've got a magic wand from the Milky Way Wake up, it's a grand new day It's a grand new day It's a grand new day Wake up, it's a grand new day Dandelions like powder puffs 
It's a perfect time to fall in love A bluebird song and a feather spray Wake up, it's a grand new day It's a grand new day It's a grand new day Wake up, it's a grand new day. Don't you feel better now? I displace that grief with the will to care. I shed my thief we call despair. Here comes the dawn, I'm unafraid. Wake up, it's a grand new day. It's a grand new day, yeah. It's a grand new day. Wake up, it's a grand new day when I can turn myself around. Make things better than I found. Please lend a hand, there's a lot to do tree to plant and an attitude, a heart to mend and a world to save. Wake up, it's a grand new day. It's a grand new day. It's a grand new day. Wake up, it's a grand new day. It's a grand new day. It's a grand new day Wake up, it's a grand new day It's a grand new day Rosemary